If you're familiar with the gentle parenting world, natural and logical consequences are discussed a lot. Now, a natural consequence is basically what happens as a direct effect of your actions. So, for instance, if a parent tells a child, don't eat any ice cream, you can have some after dinner, and they decide to eat it at 3 o'clock, the natural consequence is, well, I guess you can't have ice cream after dinner now. A logical consequence would be, okay, well, I'm not going to buy ice cream for the next week. We won't have any ice cream in the house. I will not buy any new ice cream. This goes for a lot of different things, but in reading St. Thomas Aquinas's Lenten meditation today, it really made me realize that the natural consequence of our sin is things here on earth. It's things like sickness. It's things like depression. It's, you know, it's all of the, it's death, right? That's a natural consequence of our actions. And then the logical consequence of our sin is heaven or hell, right? I mean, the consequence in and of itself obviously is hell. Um, If we willfully turn away from God, we are committing grave matters of sin, then the logical consequence is that we are not allowed to join him in heaven, in majesty, and we are sent to hell. This is a choice that we make in our decisions, but when Jesus died on the cross for us, he freed us from the punishment of sin. Should we choose him? Should we choose to pursue the grace that he offers through his death and resurrection? And he has basically, he paid that price, right? He paid the price in full. And so, because he descended into hell for three days and I just, I think that it's really important to note that difference of the natural and logical consequences because I think the God of the Old Testament had a lot more logical consequences here on earth. We had a lot more wars. There was the flood, right? The flood when Noah built the ark, that would have been a logical consequence that was imposed. Um... And that's basically a a natural consequence just occurs, whereas a logical consequence is imposed. Authoritative parenting in and of itself requires imposed consequences. If you rely solely on natural consequences to raise your children, you are practicing permissive parenting. And I know a lot of gentle parents will argue that they are not because, hey, if my kid is mean to somebody and they won't share, then people aren't going to want to play with you, bud. That's a natural consequence. That's just saying, hey, you know, if you don't share it, they're going to walk away and they're not going to want to play with you. An imposed consequence is you're going to share that toy. If you cannot, I will remove you from the situation and you will come over here and sit with me for a minute. It's an imposed consequence. Or if you're going to yell about that toy, I'm going to put it up on the shelf, right? And then as they get older, you don't even need to give the warning. It's just simply, okay, this toy is going to go up on the shelf for a little bit. You're being too aggressive. You don't need to always give the warning and explain what the consequence is going to be every single time. Because once somebody understands what those logical consequences look like, they don't need to be reiterated every single time. If you know that lying is not good, you don't need to be told every single time. Well, if you lie, that can cause issues with your trust with people around you. Or if you know, know, whatever it may be, you don't need to be informed every single time why something is a sin, why it's against God's original plan for us. Um, And so we aren't going to constantly be reminded of the logical consequence of hell either, especially if you're fully aware of it. More people may not be fully informed of what that consequence looks like. I think for myself, being raised Christian, I had a level of God-fearingness instilled within me. And now as a parent, I really focus more on the love that is cultivated. But we do also talk about how certain things are dishonoring to God and, you know, that that they break our trust, our, his trust for us and with us. And so I think that um, that offering that distinction may be helpful for some people just to know that the natural consequences that we serve for our sin are going to remain just because it's a natural product of utilizing our free will against God. But if we are pursuing Jesus, if you are seeking him and seeking his grace and, you know, as he says, he who loves me will follow my commands, um, that you you will be on that path to holiness. And that is where purgatory, I believe, is an additional mercy of Christ where 
when you die, if you have failed to be entirely on that path, but you desire it, you know, I and you've been baptized, I do hope and pray that the Lord will have mercy on so many people's souls to give them that opportunity to still journey to heaven and not give them that um, direct consequence of hell. Because I think that so many choices are made out of ignorance. I think that, you know, I mean, catechetically and theologically, doctrinally, um, for something to be a mortal sin, it has to be a grave matter. You have to freely consent to doing it. And you have to have the full awareness that it is, in fact, both of those things, that you are freely choosing, choosing it and that it is a grave matter. So I think uh, I think a lot of people live in ignorance or just unawareness of that. And so I just pray that God has mercy on so many people um, I remember when I first became Catholic, and this will be my final thing here. I remember saying, hey, the Bible says that one day every knee will confess and every, you know, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I remember saying, doesn't that include the devil? Doesn't Christ's mercy and love just extend so much further than anything that we could comprehend? And maybe, maybe one day, do you think that hell could be you know, redeemed? Do you think the people in hell could have this like second chance and it, it'll be abolished eventually and this and that? And obviously the answer is no, but I do think it's good to have that heart. I think it's good to, you know, to desire that even for the devil. I remember I used to pray for him. I'd be like, God, have mercy on him and this and that. But when there's a willful turning away, it's not about mercy. It's about the fact that somebody doesn't want it. Somebody doesn't want to be in unity with Jesus because it means surrendering their life. It means humility. It means um, allowing somebody else's rea like truth. It, it, it means allowing fundamental truth to reign supreme in your life because there can't be any discord in heaven. And so if you want to continue to live your own life, you want to continue to make your own decisions that have nothing to do with the input of God's law, of natural law, um, then, then that's going to separate you from God and a logical consequence will be imposed. We all suffer the natural consequences of sin, but, and, and through God's grace, we can handle it with joy with love, with understanding, with peace, you know, all those things Jesus has granted us that we're able to experience those natural consequences with a peace in our heart here on earth. Logical, the logical consequence of our sin, though, will not be experienced by everybody. Those who do not, who hate sin, who hate the sin within themselves and are seeking to, to form that and unite that to God and, and make the the path straight toward him those are the people that um you know with the, the grace of god and through his mercy will be with him one day in paradise so i want you to be there too i want to be there and so i'm just gonna keep doing what it is that i know there you know that i've heard and understand god to want me to do and i just pray that he's able to work in your heart draw your draw you closer to his own sacred heart and, um, and yeah, and may you just have a, a, a good life. May he be able to intercede for you and, um, and do that for you as well. So God bless you. I hope that you have an enjoyable day and I look forward to chatting with you again tomorrow. All right. God bless.